Since the start of the war in Ukraine, the West has promoted the idea that Ukraine is simply a victim and that Russia is the unprovoked aggressor. But anyone who studied the conflict knows it goes much deeper than that and that Western media is running a slick propaganda campaign to cover for Washington's ambitions in Eastern Europe. The globalists in the West have a lot invested in this fictional campaign, and trying to expose their lies can be deadly. In August, a brave Russian journalist named Daria Dugina, who courageously reported on the war crimes being committed by the West in the name of Ukraine, was assassinated in cold blood by the Ukrainian government. Daria had contributed to a documentary for One America News. And even though the globalists tried to silence her in a brutal car bombing, her sacrifice will not be forgotten. Her father, the famed political strategist Alexander Dugan, has also been vilified and demonized by the West for exposing their corruption. They even tried to assassinate him as well. And even though they murdered his daughter, he continues her fight for the truth. And he joins us now on the show. Alexander, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So my first question, and of course, it's about the West's favorite political prop. What do you think about Volodymyr Zelensky being named as man of the year, being paraded around Washington, D.C.? What is behind the cult the West is trying to create around this puppet leader? I think that is a kind of, um, of mythological narrative that is used in order to promote uh, concrete globalist agenda. The West now uses Zelensky or anybody else in Ukraine in order to demonize and vilify Russia uh, and to promote its, uh, its globalist agenda. And uh, Zelensky is a good guy, Putin is a bad guy, because of their places on this chessboard. So Zelensky is just, just the, the, the small figure on the great chessboard. So what are Russia's goals in Ukraine? What does victory for Russia look like in this situation? This uh, special military operation from the very beginning was the reaction. It is not, not just something continental of, of will, it was reaction. And uh, being reactive uh, operation, it, 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 its goals can move, can change. So to accept status quo or uh, to give back some newly acquired uh, territories is out of the question for, the, for our country, for our people, for our society, not only for Putin personally. It is out of the question for whole society, for whole people. Uh, uh, either we win in Ukraine or everybody will lose. It is about the, the existence of Russia herself. So everything is from our, on our side is put on uh, under question, everything. But for the West, it's absolutely a different situation because well, the West could easily accept Ukraine under uh, Russian control, continue make sanctions, pressure. So it is not, not the price to start the uh, nuclear war. We cannot lose this conflict. Do you think that nuclear war between America and Russia is actually possible? Are we looking at a potential scenario for Armageddon? Uh, the problem is that uh, it is obvious that Russia uh, has no desire at all to start the nuclear war because it will be mean suicide for us and suicide for the West, suicide for all. But the only thing the West uh, suggests, uh, supposes that Putin will never dare uh, I think that uh, Putin will dare in a critical situation, 
And I think that the West is playing quite a, quite a dangerous game. Do you think that we can recover from the globalist tyrants who are destroying our culture and leading us into the next world war? Do you think that's even possible at this point? I think yes. I think yes, because uh, finally uh, there is two, two Wests. The West is not united. There is a, a kind of hidden implicit civil war in the West itself. And I think that um, uh, if you understand that Russia is not the enemy of the West as something united, but uh, Russia was chosen as a main goal of globalist elite. Uh, and for them, Russia, populist, Trumpists, they are regarded as global enemy of open society, and they should be crushed, demonized, vilified, killed, kept silent. So they try to silence, to destroy, to prevent, to limit, to not to give to us the, the possibility to to open our, our mouth. So Zelensky is one of, of the tools of this globalist network, and he is the enemy of American people, of the West. He's not the part of the West. He's just, uh, just a puppet uh, of globalists. But I think uh, nothing, uh, nothing is lost before everything is lost. What do people in the West need to know about what's happening in Ukraine? What should Americans be told that they aren't hearing from our media? The West has lost uh, its, uh, uh, its roots, its uh, traditional values, how it has, uh, West has lost the, the faith, the tradition, the sacredness. And this loss of being of the West has led precisely to this situation. And it is not uh, uh, Russia against the West or against uh, Russians against Ukrainians. We and Ukrainians are uh, the same, more or less the same, two poles of the same Eastern Slavic uh, population. But that is a kind of ideological, maybe metaphysical, religious war, a war of spiritual war between tradition and modernity. And Russia represents here tradition. And the globalist West and uh, globalist proxies represent modernity in all its perverted shape. It's evil. It's absolutely evil. Alexander exactly. Dugan, thank you once again for speaking with us today. Take care and our prayers are with you and your family. Thank you.